the one who treated him with mercy. Go and do likewise. What a beautiful message we have from the Lord Jesus in the gospel, especially on this Sunday that we dedicate for the divine mercy. Amen? But before that, no, because that's supposed to be the challenge, I would like to ask, or if not, at least somehow know, who among us here are saints? Who among us here are saints? Who among us here at least would like to become saints? Do you not believe or you do not believe that you are a saint? Hui. <laughs> you know what? That's a very essential and fundamental question. And something to reflect about. No? Because I think if we are talking about the message of the gospel, then we realize that probably many times we fail no? to become messengers and instruments of God's mercy like this good Samaritan because we ourselves in our hearts and minds do not have the conviction, the word conviction, no? that we have God with us, that we have his mercy in our heart. And why I mention this? You know, uh, every now and then, I do not always listen no, to the radio station while driving. But there are times that if I would like to know the news, I would tune in usually that AM channel or station 1070. And every now and then too, the whoever is the one who is kind of, what is it, the anchor or the radio announcer, at some point, there's that kind of proclamation of a person who is supposed to be considered and hailed as the hero of the week. I don't know if you notice that, no? And, and why? Because supposedly this person is doing something a little extraordinary, exceptional, exemplary, unexpected, and something to admire. And because of what he or she has done, then he is considered or she is considered a hero, at least for that week. Now, I mention this because that's supposed to be who we are and what we are going to do every day of our life. Because if we put that in the Christian and spiritual context of our life, we are not just talking about heroes. The proper and technical term is not a hero. 
but a, a saint. A saint. Or at least a holy angel. Usually, when we admire and see something, you know, exemplary, exceptional, and really worth admiring for of that person who is doing it, we usually exclaim, you are a saint. You are an angel, or I have my angel with me, somebody. You know? It can be, or she can be, or he can be a husband, a wife, a friend, a co-worker, a child, a brother, a sister, or even somebody whom we do not know that in time of need, we never expected, we never thought, and yet in his or her kindness, in her generosity, in his generosity, did an extra mile or extended a hand or he or she is just an epitome of how it is to be kind, to be generous, to be kind, to be compassionate, to be caring. And all these are manifestations of somebody in the context of faith, of somebody whom we consider a saint. Amen? And that is why even before Mother Teresa died, no? because of what she did and she, her exemplary, extraordinary, exceptional care and compassion for the poor over there in Calcutta, India, that she had been regarded already as a living saint. But if you come to think of it, was it Mother Teresa only who was capable of doing it? Hui. No, it's supposed to be for everyone. But again, it comes to that principle, no? You usually say nature is the foundation of every action because action follows nature. And that is very important because that would really give us the energy, something that we believe in, that we are convinced ourselves and yes the gospel is kind of challenging no this scholar of the law who was supposed to be trying to trap the lord jesus about uh, his expertise of the law and to think that he supposedly was a man of faith and he knows his religion. He knows the commandments. And yet the Lord Jesus was just very simple in his response, no? With the example of the Good Samaritan. And he said, go and do the same. And yet most likely, he would not do it because, again, he did not have that conviction in himself that he could do the same. And that is why even this priest and Levite, who were supposed to be men of prayer, men of God, who were supposed to be pious, well-versed in their religion and faith, and it's not that they were bad, and even their reasons were neither bad or were not bad either. Because for a religious priest, a Jewish priest, 
especially on his way to the temple, he should avoid anything impure or at least would make him impure ritually. And even the Levite, no? he could have justified himself in his mind probably, no, most likely in his mind, that, oh no, I should not do it no? because I would be in danger because if this person out of fear, no? he was victimized, then I should secure myself first. No? Personal security. And how many times we have those justifications for not being able to do? Because again, forgetting the fact that call to charity or becoming a saint or becoming holy to do the extraordinary thing and really give our hand in charity, in mercy, and compassion. And most likely because, again, we do not have that conviction that no matter what, in good time or in bad time, even in the most inconvenient of the situations, God would always be with us, no matter what. Because we are one with him. Because we are saints. Meaning, we have that holiness in our heart and mind. Because the Lord Jesus, who himself is compassion and mercy, will do the things for us and would use us to share and extend his mercy to others. And I emphasize this because that's actually the message of all this in the first and the second reading. No? Even in the time of Moses, in his discourse supposedly to the Israelites. No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. St. Paul in the second reading, Christ is the image, visible image of an invisible God. Since the beginning, since creation, until his coming, he is the head of the church. All things, no, from the beginning to the end. And why St. Paul has realized and proclaimed that? Because Lord and the Lord Jesus is the epitome, supposedly, of God's mercy. And if we believe him, that we share Christ in our hearts and in our minds, and if Christ himself is the visible testament of a God who is not separated and isolated and above all, to the contrary, he is full of mercy, he is full of compassion, and he showed us how it is to be merciful, to be compassionate, how it is to sacrifice oneself for the care and well-being of others, how it is to liberate others in their hatred and whatever forms of slavery or illness because of his compassion. And even the dead, he restored their lives, again, all these manifestations of God's mercy, that God, the Father, is merciful, is compassionate. And yet many times we forget that. No, we forget that. And that is why it's not enough to have faith. It's not enough to know our faith. They are very important. We do not uh, neglect the fact that they are also important. Even our pious devotions, our 
practices. They are also, and they can be instruments of sanctification. But it should not end there. Because we can be somebody who is going always to Mass. We have our prayers and devotions. And yet we still are lacking in compassion. And that's precisely the point, no? Because again, because of that lack of conviction that the Lord who is merciful, the source of all holiness, is and would always be with us. And that is why it's very important, no? Because action follows being. And if we do not have that conviction, if we do not have belief in ourselves or belief in ourselves that we have Christ and Christ means mercy and compassion, then how can we be agents, instruments of his mercy and compassion to others? And in fact, that's his mission given to us. No? Go and do likewise. Amen? Go. And if you do not believe that we are capable and we are being gifted generously by the Lord and he himself is with us in our hearts and in our minds, then how can we do the same? Because ultimately, our mission is to become good Samaritans. And that's the other term for somebody who is merciful, who is kind, who is compassionate. And that should be the fruits of what we are devoted to knowing with conviction that the Lord is mercy and in his divine mercy is empowering us and would continue to empower us wherever we are, wherever we go, whoever we are, because again of the spiritual blessings that he continues to pour in our hearts. And that is why his message is, trust in my mercy. Be convinced that I am the divine mercy, mercy itself. And you can be a living testament of my mercy because you are becoming compassionate, kind, loving, caring, as I am. Amen? And that is our hope, no? that is our prayer always, that we would and should not forget that, that by God's mercy and compassion, our hearts be touched Always. And we have that in mind. And again, that conviction. Because, yes, it's true we are saints in the making. But in fact, we can and we are saints if we have Christ already in us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please stand.